Now, in a previous video, we already talked a little bit about ectonodes, right? Which is those edges of the ecosystem where ecosystem suddenly shifts from one to the other. But I want to take a pause before I continue talking about things that limit biodiversity to talk about the major cause of limitation for biodiversity. By the way, I did not mention that predators sometimes will limit diversity. The more predation the prey is under, the harder it is for it to spend energy at, to diversify. So predation increases the competition among prey and it lowers the diversity that exists within a smaller number of top predators will sometimes also uh, increase the diversity of the ecosystem. And if there's too many top predators, you're going to lower the diversity of the ecosystem. And this takes me to the last thing I want to talk about factors limiting biodiversity. The thing that most limits diversity on Earth, the top predator, the dominant species, the ketone species, the foundation species of the Earth, the most advanced organism that has ever lived and perhaps the dumbest thing to walk in this planet, human beings. I say that with all my mind because never before that I know of, a species is going to be responsible for its own extinction. And we talk more about this when we do environmental science, but I want you to understand that humans are single-handedly the most limiting factor for the destruction of biodiversity. A lot of the things we talked about have to do with humans. So let's go to the beginning and look at that. We reduce the amount of water available to ecosystems. We're changing the climate because of global warming, right? We change the amount of life which messes with the evapotranspiration. We mess with the soil and causes desertification and the removal of nutrients from the soil. We, then we end up fertilizing the soil too much and we cause things like eutrophication, which also destroys ecosystems and reduces the biodiversity. We messed also, messed also with the disease that spreads from one place to the other because we are constantly moving between ecosystems and carrying things between ecosystems. We introduce invasive species, which destroy endemic species, which are species which are unique to only one area of the planet. Very important. We didn't even talk about this before. It's very crucial that we don't destroy that, those areas of habitats because sometimes the species only lives in that area. And so those endemic species, which are species which are unique to a specific area of the planet, they're the most delicate, and we're constantly destroying habitats from them. We overexploit the ecosystem. We cut down too much, we destroy too much. We pollute the ecosystem. And on top of all of that, we do the thing that is the most responsible for destroying ecosystems on Earth. We cut down the habitat. The single most destructive thing for biodiversity is habitat size. Because you study habitat destruction, focus on biodiversity as a product of species area relationships. It seems like the smaller the area, the more patchy the ecosystem is, the worse it is for the things living in it. In order for you to understand biodiversity, you have to see that it's tied to the greater amount of space possible. Smaller spaces will decrease how much can be supported. And that is something that they research in what is called those species area effects. The species biodiversity depends on a certain amount of area. When you destroy the habitat by reducing it or fragmenting it, fragmenting is when you sit into pieces like you see in the screen over there. You're going to increase what we talked about when we, did, we talked about ectonomes, which are edge effects. The whole ecosystem becomes an edge pretty much. And the species which, which rely on the interior of the ecosystem, not on the edge, can't survive. There's going to be more competition because there's less resources and a smaller ecosystem can support less species, like we talked about, less producers, less diversity. You're going to have more edges, which means more people coming in and out and trying to compete with the people who are already there. All of it becomes pretty much an edge. And sometimes there, even, there isn't even an ectonome. It's like there's forest and all of a sudden there isn't because of how we destroy it. And that's also not good because remember, natural ectonomes help protect the ecosystem and actually increase diversity as long as the size of the ecosystem is not too small. So when everything is put together, humans destroy the habitat too much because we try to grow and we need the resources, we need the space. And what we end up doing it is reducing the ecosystem size so much that it reduces the ability of the ecosystem to sustain damage. It's a sanity. We'll talk more about that later. It will reduce the ecosystem's ability to support a number of the species that's greater because there's not a lot of productivity anymore. You break it into bits, you increase the edge effects. Everything is like an ectonome. 
everything is the edge. In the middle, the people who deserve and want to live in the ecosystem can't live there anymore because you don't have an, an intact ecosystem anymore. You only have a fraction of it. And it's shattered into smaller bits, forcing the, the animals to have to fight to survive either on that small area or to have to brave the, the great expanse between the viable areas and risk dying in between without resources. All of these things are reasons why human beings are destroying the earth and ultimately as we will talk about at the end when we discuss biodiversity the result of this is that we will end up destroying ourselves because much of what we rely on we rely on diversity and research studies show that in habitats are more valuable intact than they actually are by getting the land that we end up using for some other reason in reality everything the ecosystem gives us and we'll talk about the value of biodiversity in another video the services that we get from the ecosystems are more valuable than anything else that we could gain by destroying them. And it's not okay to, sh to, sh to save a few small patches here and there because you're making the size smaller and you're fragmenting it, you, you, which increases the edge effects, increases the competition, decreases the amount of productivity, decreases biodiversity, decreases the resilience and the stability of the ecosystem, its ability to fight disturbances, it destroys life, and in addition to all of that, we overexploit, we pollute, we spread disease, we spread invasive species, we destroy endemic species, we cause global warming, we limit the amount of water, sometimes we even limit the amount of sunlight, we limit the amount of nutrients, we cause forest fires, we replace habitats with our own cities, we cause increased amounts of flood. All of these things are examples of the destructive power of human beings, especially by destroying habitats, which is the single most handily uh, way to guarantee reduction in biodiversity, on top of everything else that we also do. We are the most massive natural disaster to ever walk in the surface of this planet. That's some food for thought.